Hello, this is Eugene Blanchard of TelecomWorld101.com. Today we're going to talk about Voice over IP and VLANs. Uh, this video is copyrighted. Uh, you're allowed to view it, a uh, link to this YouTube website uh, video, but you're not allowed to copy it, edit it, or claim it as your own. That would just be wrong. Okay, so Voice over IP and VLANs. So the question is, what is a VLAN? Well, it's short for Virtual LAN. LAN is a local area network. Uh, you take an Ethernet switch and pretend to divide it into two or more switches. So it appears like two separate switches. We call them virtual switches. So why would you do that? Well, each virtual switch can be assigned to its own network. The traffic is independent for each network within that switch. You can have a network for data and you can have a network for voice. And both voice and data can share the same network infrastructure. This is called convergence. So you have the other option is that you could have a totally separate network for voice, and that's what we had in the past with its own cabling infrastructure and its own switching devices. And then you have a, another one for data, which is kind of redundant. So now with uh, uh, virtual uh, LANs and VLANs, what we can do is use the exact same network infrastructure. Something else that we can do is that we can assign priorities to the networks. The voice network can have priority over the data network. This is called quality of service, QoS. Um, so basically w there's going to be certain uh, points in the network where data and voice traffic is going to flow. Well, what we can do is give priority to the voice traffic. End devices use ports configured in access mode. So end devices are things like uh, IP phones, uh, laptops, um, PBX servers, um, print servers, other type of servers, web servers, etc. Only one VLAN is allowed per access port. Now between switches we use something called Ethernet trunks and what they do is they allow multiple VLANs per trunk port. So normally what we'd have is we'd have uh, end device would be connected up to a switch port and it would be set in access mode and that port would be assigned to a, a specific VLAN. Now between switches what we want to do is we might have lots of VLANs on, on these switches and we want um, a highway that we can run all the VLANs through and that's called a trunk port. So end devices are, are configured as access ports and they have one VLAN assigned. Uh, between switches we run a trunk port which allow many VLANs to go through. So how many VLANs do you need in a network? Well, for voice over IP you typically have four. You have one for data and you can have multiple ones for data because you can have um, at the uh, uh, post-secondary institute that I teach at is that we have uh, academic VLAN, we have an administrative VLAN, and then we have a student VLAN and a guest VLAN, and that's all data. And then we have another one for voice, for a voice over IP network. Uh, we have one for management and one for native VLAN. So what are those other two used? We have a management VLAN and we have a native VLAN. Well the management VLAN is provides security and the native VLAN, VLAN is used for trunks. And trunks are between uh, switches. Management VLAN, only those computers allowed on the management VLAN can configure the network devices. So what we have is a separate network just for network devices and these are Ethernet switches and, and routers and print servers and that. So they, they're on a special um, VLAN called the management VLAN. You can actually name it anything you want but typically we call it management. The native VLAN is spe uh, specifically for trunks and they can carry multi VLAN traffic. Now, the first standard we'll look at is 802.1Q, and that's a standard for trunks. And it's to identify VLAN information in the Ethernet frame. And this is very specific to within switches and within on uh, trunks. We also call it dot .1Q, that's just short for the IEEE 802.1Q standard, so we just call it .1Q, and it's also called tagging. Tagging is a pretty neat name for it because what it does is it'll uh, insert a special field into the Ethernet frame and tag that frame with the VLAN ID that it belongs to. And it only appears on trunks, and trunks appear between switches and sometimes routers. Hmm. 
Uh, VLANs are numbered and named at the switch, and a subnet is assigned to the VLAN. So we could have VLAN 10, which could be for data, and it has the subnet address of 192.168.10.0. Uh, we could have another VLAN, VLAN 20. Uh, the 20 and the 10 are the VLAN IDs. Uh, we can give the VLAN names, and uh, this one's called voice. It has a subnet address, or uh, actually a class C address, of 192.168.20.0. Uh, VLAN 99 is a management VLAN, 192.168.99.0. Uh, you're allowed at pretty well any uh, v ID number from 0 or from 1 up to, uh, uh, I think it's 999 and that. Um, rule of thumb, make the subnet number the same as the VLAN number. Uh, so what you'll see here is VLAN 10, subnet 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 20. It just makes it a lot easier down the road. Often the management VLAN is the same as the native VLAN. Not a good idea, um, and there's a reason for that. Um, what happens is that if you plug in a PC into a port on this a switch that's not assigned to a VLAN, it will default to the native VLAN. And that's usually VLAN 1. Uh, and when a switch first turns on, uh, the de default VLAN is 1 or the native VLAN. And, that. and you could have a, a problem. So normally what we do is I would keep them separate. A management VLAN and then a native VLAN for trunking for a security part. Now on the switch configuration, um, in this case, we're talking about a Cisco, based on a Cisco switch. At the switch console's command line, to create a VLAN, it's quite easy. You go config T, and then you say VLAN 10. You just created the VLAN 10 with an ID of 10, and you give it a name. Name data. Done. Creating VLANs is very easy. Now, in the Cisco world, what you do is you call up an interface and assign it to VLANs. In other manufacturers, what they do is they call up the VLAN and then assign interfaces to it. Basically same purpose. So to create an access port, and that would be for an end device, you'd go interface FA0 slash 1. Uh, what that means is that the FA is short for fast Ethernet in the Cisco world. Um, module 0, you might have multiple modules inside your switch. Or sometimes, uh, and then port, I said port 5 <laughs> on here, it's supposed to be port 1. So fast Ethernet, uh, module 0, port 1, it says 5 here. Uh, then what you do is you put the switch port into an access mode. So you say switch port mode access. Now we know we're going to hook up end devices to it. Then you say switch port access VLAN 10. Now you assign that uh, VLAN 10 to this port. So that's for end devices like PCs and, and servers and PBXs and things like that. To configure a trunk, you'd go, in this case we're using interface FA0 slash 5, uh, which is port 5 on the switch. Switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1Q. That tells it what encapsulation protocol to follow. And that's typically for smart uh, switches. Some switches only know dot 1Q, so this, uh, this command here is optional. Then you tell it to put uh, what mode to run into? Switch port mode trunk. You're going to make a trunk, and that means you're going to talk to another switch. You say switch port trunk native VLAN 99. That's our native VLAN. Right? So now the switch, uh, th that trunk knows what uh, native VLAN is, and what it will now be able to do is it will now be able to carry traffic that's tag traffic for other VLANs, like VLAN 10. So there's a problem. In the above network, there's three VLANs. There's VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 90 with their subnet or their network addresses. But the problem is, how do you get from network 192.168.10.0 to 192.168.20.0? There's no mechanisms in the VLANs to do that. Solution, what we do is have to add a router. One port will be the default gateway for 192.168.10.0. And another port will be the default gateway for 192.168.20.0. So what we have is we use the two ports on the router, and we run two uh, uh, lines to the switch. Now the switch ports to the router are configured as access ports. So one port will be uh, an access port to VLAN 10, and the other one will be an access port to VLAN 20. Big but. This uses up router ports quickly. 
In this case, for every VLAN, you're going to need a physical port at the router and at the switch. In the original example, we needed four VLANs. We needed a data, a voice, a management, and a native VLAN, right? So all of a sudden, now we need four ports on the router, four ports on the switch. If we had uh, a, a few more VLANs going on, all of a sudden we're going to run out of ports real quickly. So not an ideal situation, but and that a better solution is router on a stick. Um, that's what it's called, actually. It's called router on a stick. Uh, and what we do is we use one Ethernet port on the router and we make it, or sorry, uh, we use one Ethernet port on the switch and make it a native trunk. Then we can run multiple VLANs on it, but we've got to do some magic at the router, right? So the router's got to figure out that, yeah, it's, it's talking to a, a switch that's got a trunk port on it. So on the router, in this case, we're using fast ether zero slash zero interface. We create sub interfaces that correspond to VLANs. So here we say interface FA zero slash zero. That's the physical air interface. Then we create sub interfaces, and we say interface FA zero slash zero dot ten. The ten refers to the VLAN ten. Then we tell it encapsulation dot one Q ten. It says, okay, we're going to do some trunking on here, and we're going to use dot one Q standard which is the IEEE 802.1Q standard, and we're going to assign that interface to VLAN 10 so it knows what um, a VLAN it's going to talk on. Then it says IP address 192.168.10.1.255.255.255.0 assigns an IP address to it. Right. So on this one physical interface, we've just created a sub-interface that talks to VLAN 10. Then we can create another one. We can say interface fa0 slash 0 dot 20 and create another sub interface that then talks to VLAN 20. So we have one physical interface fa0 slash 0 and we can have multiple sub interfaces assigned to different VLANs. Now this interface becomes the default gateway for each VLAN. So in this example that's shown right here, this is the default gateway for VLAN 10. And we have to do this for each VLAN used. The best method is to use a layer 3 switch. We route between VLANs at the switch. It will be routing at line rate at 1 gigabits per second. Layer 3 switch is really simple to configure. We create a VLAN interface for each VLAN. So we've done all the normal VLAN uh, configuration that we've done. We've created our VLANs and uh, we've assigned our ports to the VLANs. Then what we do is, is another step. In Cisco, what we say is interface VLAN 10. That creates an interface for the VLAN 10, well for VLAN 10. Then we assign an IP address to it. Then we create another interface for VLAN 20 and we assign an IP address to it. Then we give the command IP routing and that tells the switch that you're now a layer 3 switch. And it's like a miracle. It routes between the two and it routes at what we call line rate, what the port speed is. So if you have a 100 megabit per second switch, it's going to route at 100 megabits. If you have a gigabit switch, it's going to route at gigabit. So what about the voice stuff? Well, a voice over IP phone is actually a three port switch. You have one external port is connected to the network, which means goes back to uh, an Ethernet switch. One internal port is connected to the phone, so it does the telephony side. And then you have an external port that's for a PC to hook up. So it's got a three port switch. So IP phones need two VLANs. So coming out of the Ethernet switch, an IP phone needs two VLANs. It needs a voice VLAN for the PC. <laughs> I got this backwards. It needs a, a data VLAN for the PC and a voice VLAN for the IP phone. All right, so this is a little test here. <laughs> you need a voice VLAN for the IP phone and you need a data VLAN for the PC. I guess I did this just to see if I was way. <laughs> Oops. All right. So what the solution is, is that you create a multi VLAN access port. It's still an access port, right? But it's multi VLAN. Now I said earlier, access ports, one VLAN only. Well, I kind of lied. Uh, for IP phones, the switch port is a multi VLAN port. So what we do is we configure the Cisco switch con uh, in this case, a Cisco example, we go interface FA0 slash 5. We put it in access mode, switch port mode access. We say switch port access VLAN 10. 
That's what we'd normally do for a data VLAN, right? Then we add a, another line that says switch port voice VLAN 20. What this does is it sets tagging to identify the voice VLAN for quality of service and for the IP phone. IP phones are smart enough to, to look for that tagging. Uh, this is not always automatic on every IP phone. Uh, what happens is IP phones require configuration for the VLAN IDs and, and QoS. This might be through the phone's web GUI. Uh, a lot of the phones, if you put in their uh, IP address on your web browser, they actually have a web GUI with them. Uh, some of them they have to go through the phone's LCD display. And the older models models did this, and uh, most of the newer ones you you actually configure the T, uh, the phone through a TFTP server config files. So you'd go in there and you'd set up and say, okay, this is your VLAN ID, this is your uh, voice VLAN ID, this is your data VLAN ID. When the phone boots up, the first thing it looks is for a DHCP server. DHCP server has uh, an option, typically option 66 or 150, that gives the phone the IP address of a TFTP server to con download its config files. And in the config files, for that phone, it will have its VLAN IDs. So that was voice over IP and VLANs. I'm Eugene Blanchard for Telecom World 101.com.